All right, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. This is the Dr. Yuzo, uh, ECE 318. This is a week uh, three and uh, four lecture. So first of all, let me share the screen here, and please let me know if you can hear me well um, and also uh, see my screen. Any trouble of achieving those? All right, thank you, Shane. Okay, so here uh, we are watching the uh, Gantt chart we have uh, from the beginning of the semester. So what we are seeing here is uh, this cell is where we at right now. Okay, uh, pretty much the first lecture for module one. And I start talking about the diode. Okay, and uh, recalling our pattern, we are talking about same thing, same pattern for three different components: diode. MOSFET and the BDT. So today, from today on, we're gonna start to talk about them, okay, one by one. The first one is diode, okay. Let's see the basics about the diode. And uh, before that, um, we do want to uh, finish up some important concepts we didn't finish by last uh, module. The basic amplifier concept, okay, because it also related to one of our uh, homework zero problem, right? The uh, last problem in homework zero is about the basic amplifier. Let's talk about it. Okay, the amplifier we are talking about is following such idea or the concept. Okay, generally speaking, the amplifier itself is made of transistor. Okay. Transistor. Well, of course, we are not quite familiar with the transistor concept yet, but uh, by now you can only just remember the transistor means nothing but the MOSFET and BAT for now, for this course. Okay. But there are also some other types of transistors okay. and you might come across in future career. Okay. So it's made of transistor, a transistor circuit implementing amplification function. Okay. So you have a input signal source Okay, which is to be amplified, and also an output at the other end of the, the transistor amplifier is a signal amplified. Okay, so this pretty much is the output. This is, is the input. Okay, so from the magnitude, you can easily tell the magnitude is increased. Okay, this is nothing but the amplification. Well, what I matter here is the gain. The most important concept in uh, the amplifier, the gain is equals to what? Now, the gain is simply just uh, always be equals to output over the input. Okay. Of course, it's up to how you define who is output and who is input. However, the gain of the system, or say the amplifier, will always be the ratio between output and input. Okay. Numerator is output. Denominator is the input. It's just simple like that. Right? Just simple like that. Well, however, and this is a, a voltage amplifier model because when we talk about amplifier, we might talk about the voltage amplifier or current amplifier. However, remember in this course, actually, as well as the uh, 358, most of the time we are talking about the voltage amplifier especially this course. This course is basically completely about the voltage amplifier, not current amplifier. However, we will talk both in this basic model. Uh, the model means we are using a what? A dependent source to represent the amplification. How it works is like this. So first, you have an input source. Yes. Series connected way with a resistor, we call it RS. RS is nothing but the source resistance. Look at here, it's defined up here. Okay. RS is the source resistance. It's inevitable source resistance. Okay. We obviously don't want this uh, source resistance uh, there, however, it's inevitable. Okay. You have a source, it's inevitably having a Series connected to resistor with it, okay, because this is a voltage source. Okay. 
this input source is feeding the voltage amplifier, which is represented by the system between these two pairs of ports. Okay, so this is the uh, voltage amplifier. And then the last part is at the output end of the voltage amplifier, you obviously have a load. Okay, so this is load. RL is nothing but load. Okay, load is represented by RL. So basically, it's three sections, right? One input, two amplifier itself, three is the load. So the system model is like this. So input feeding a pretty much this guy, RE, which is called input impedance. Okay. Input impedance, or say input resistance. Input resistance, RE. Okay, here. And uh, this is a single loop circuit at input end. And the voltage is implied by this what dependent source, okay, dependent source. So according to the labeling and the circuit symbol, this is what is a voltage dependent because this is the value of it is depending on a voltage. That's why it's called voltage dependent. However, it is a voltage source. Why is voltage source? Because of this symbol. So it's a voltage dependent voltage source. Okay, this is the uh, because we have again four types of dependent source. This is one of the voltage dependent voltage source. Okay, according to this voltage dependent source, the output is actually the what the voltage across the load. Okay. Be very careful. The output voltage is not the voltage of this dependent source, but the voltage of the load. Okay, be very careful. And at this output end, there's another single loop circuit. Okay, this is the model of the ampli voltage amplification. And if we try to conduct some uh, math to have more insight of this uh, system, let me write some calculation about this uh, voltage amplifier model okay, on the uh, paper under the top cam. So, to this voltage amplifier, okay. So input end, input end, which is the first single loop circuit here. What we have about the V in is equals to uh, V s times in over R s plus R in. How about this? What I'm writing is is what. Essentially, this is what what principle I based on to come up with this uh, equation. What what is it? Voltage divider. Voltage divider. Very good. Josh is right. So it's nothing but voltage divider. Okay. Voltage divider. Because what really what we really care is the eventually we're gonna derive the output voltage. However, the output voltage is due to the voltage. Dependent voltage source and the voltage dependent voltage source, the voltage value is depending on the V in. That's why in the first input and single loop circuit, we are deriving the V in first. That's why we are, we are having this. Okay, this is logic. This is logic. Okay. So this is the V in equation. And then we go to the output end. Is another single loop circuit. We apply the voltage divider once again to derive V naught. See, what is V naught, right? V naught equals to what? 
So basically, V naught is the voltage across the RL, and RL is sharing the total voltage here with R naught, right? This is how we write this second voltage divider. Right? Numerator is RL, denominator is R naught plus RL, right? And this guy is obviously the total voltage shared by, by these two. So this is a voltage divider, voltage divider again. Okay. Two voltage dividers. And then what are we seeing is we want to find the voltage gain. Okay, this is the voltage gain. And what is voltage gain? We just mentioned. It's just a gain, we can call it we can name the gain as A, capital A, and just equals to V naught over V S. V S is the input, okay, rather than V in. Uh, be very careful. Okay? Uh, v S is the input rather than V in, okay, because V S is the input source. Okay? V in is just a voltage received by this voltage amplifier. Does it make sense? So these two are not necessarily the same. So Vs is the source voltage, uh, which is our input, yeah, which is our input. Of course, don't try to memorize like a Vs is the input, V in is not. No, don't memorize the name. Memorize why. We are talking about input in the denominator. That must be input. It must be input or whatever defined in the problem. Maybe the problem is nice enough to define who is the input. However, here we are talking about the source, which is Vs rather than Ve. Okay. So how to derive the, the ratio between these two? Look at this two equation, right? And go back to this two equation. What are we seeing is we don't know the Ve. We don't know the Vs. We don't know the V naughts either. So three unknowns, two equations. We can't find any one of them. So this three to us is three unknowns, two equations. All right, can't find find individual unknown. I can't find individual one. Can only find ratio between any two of them. I don't know if this makes sense. Uh, this is some uh, basic algebra knowledge. Okay, if you have two equations and then three unknowns, what can happen? You can't find any individual unknown, no way, okay? Because you're short of one, okay? The number of the equations and number of unknowns must be same so that you can find uh, all of the individual unknown, okay? However, now we are short of one equation, okay? So what we can do is just find the ratio between any two of them. So what can we do? We want to keep, in the result, we want to keep V0 and Vs. So we can just cancel out the V in. So how can cancel out the V in? Very easy, right? You substitute the V in the second equation here. You substitute the V in the second equation here by the first equation. Does it make sense? The V in goes to here, substitute it. And then V in is gone. V in is gone. Makes sense. Right. And then from this result, you derive the gain. Just a V naught over V S, and then what can we do here? You divide by V S on both sides of the equal. And then you got it, right? Okay. 
So this is the uh, gain, how we derive the gain. And pretty much, uh, pretty much also the, uh, the solution for the loss of problem in the homework there. So this is how we got it. This is how we got it. Um, any questions? Any questions regarding this uh, der derivation? Uh, one thing, one thing uh, I noticed is that the uh, dependent source, uh, dependent source. Um, what is the real component, the physical real component for for the dependent source? Do you guys have any idea what physical real component the or say the dependent source is representing? Do we have any real physical device? Really, what uh, dependent source? Do we have any anything like this? Have you ever think of this question? Because we learned the dependent source from two thirty five, pretty much the first electrical engineering course. However, we learn RLC, they're, they're real existing, right? They're, they're really existing. Voltage source, current source, independent source, really there. They're really power supply we, we, we could have in, in the lab. However, who is the dependent source? Anyone knows? Anything you can come up with? Connor said is transistor. Well, the transistor is not actually the output voltage is 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 uh, it's to be honest, the transistor's model is dependent source. That's very true. Okay, uh, the, the transistor could be represented or say modeled by uh, a dependent source. But physically, I mean, the transistor is not a physically a dependent source. It's, it's not the source, right? Or say, even though it could be modeled as dependent source, that's true. However, it's not physically a dependent source. It's not a source, right? So the concept of dependent source the, is is a little bit blur. Actually, is really blur. And as far as I know, there's no really existing dependent source, this thing, okay? Like I said, RLC, independent source, they're really there, right? We can see them, we can use them in the lab. However, dependent source, no, no such thing physically. The only thing we can do is model something by dependent source. Okay, that's that's very true, that's very true. Okay, so this is the uh, a little bit inside of the dependent source. Okay, so there's no real thing, uh, dependent source, no. But we're gonna use it to model transistors, or we'll model the amplifier, okay, we do so. All right, and then let's take a look at the uh, equation as well as the voltage amplifier model. Now the very important thing is the input and output resistance. Input resistance are in and output resistance are not. What do you think about them? R in, we want this guy to be high or low. Same question on R not. And why? Anybody has any thought? First of all, regard R in, we want this guy to be high or low, and why? Daniel say it is low, and why is that? Why we want we want to design because we're gonna design amplifier. And then you somehow either increase or decrease input impedance or resistance. And why we are doing so? A low input resistance here can introduce less voltage drop. Well, here be very, very careful. The correct answer is 180 degree opposite. The higher input resistance here, the more voltage going to be across this guy due to the voltage divider. 
And the more voltage cross this guy, the more vo voltage at output end here, dependent source, gonna receive. Does this make sense? So the higher, the better. In other words, the higher resistance, input resistance here, the more voltage you can occupy or utilize out of source VS. Yep, that's right. Okay. So the higher input resistance here, the more voltage you can occupy out of VS. So the more voltage at the output end you're gonna have. So the higher input resistance, the better for voltage amplifier. Okay, for voltage amplifier, be very careful. And then at the output end here, basic based on the same idea, the output resistance here, the higher the better, or the lower the better, and why? And speaking out will be much much more efficient. That's why I always say use both speaker and microphone content. All right. Um, uh, higher or uh, higher resistance because then there's less power loss over uh, R zero. So the higher the better. I think so. Yeah. Why is that again? Um, because then there's less uh, current running through R zero, so so there'd be more like power transferred to the. Oh no! Impedance match. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can you can you can uh, answer it all over. Okay, so um, if the impedance of the load matches the impedance of R R uh, zero, because then maximum power is transferred, is what I would say. <laughs> Mm, here, it, the, regarding the concern about the power, it makes some sense. However, be very careful here. We, we, the first concern is not the uh, is not the uh, power, power efficiency. The first concern, the priority one thing is the gain. Gain means what? what? The more output voltage you can have, the better. The more output voltage you can have, the better. Okay, that's the priority number one reach certain level of gain. And then you're thinking of the power efficiency thing. Okay. Exactly, I got the correct answer from Shane. The lower the better for R0. Because once again, this is a single loop voltage divider. The lower the R0, the more voltage could be occupied by RL. Does it make sense? Because you are generating voltage, what's the purpose of your amplifier? It's feeding the load. Your load receives more voltage, the better, right? So the lower the V naught, the more voltage your load is going to receive. The shape, okay? So the, the lower output resistance is, the better. Okay? Well, the higher the input resistance are in, the better for voltage amplifier. And this is the idea. And these two conclusions very, very important uh, for, especially for future, you, you're going to have multiple choice. So uh, these are good example for multiple choice problem. Okay. Yeah, Kevin had the uh, answer on that right as well. He beat me by like half a second. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, seems so. I seems so. But uh, my screen showing the uh, typing uh, a little bit uh, delayed. Yep, seems so. Uh, once again, speak if you could. Okay, if you couldn't, I I don't understand why. But 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 if you couldn't, then then type. Okay. Give the first priority to the. Yes, this is a time sensitive lecture, so typing, waiting typing is too long right, sometimes.
All right, next one is current amplifier, which is not the point for this class. Uh, however, the model is a little bit different. Instead of a series connected, now it's parallel connected in both input end and output end. However, in voltage divider, uh, in voltage amplifier, we are applying the voltage divider idea, and in current amplifier, we are applying current divider idea. Okay, this is also part of the solution for the homework zero, lots of problem. So now let's take a look at the uh, input resistance are in here and output resistance are not here once again. So think about it. So the input resistance of current amplifier, the higher the better or the smaller the better, and why? Also, same question to the R not output resistance. Any idea? For this one, wouldn't we want to low R in so that way more current is directed and it's uh, across it? Mm hmm Very good. Very good. And for R not? What what about R not? Um you'd want a higher R not so that way more current is directed towards the RL. Very clear. Uh, that's very clear. Uh, that's very clear. Okay. Uh, uh, everyone is falling. So basically this is a current divider. So the lower R in, more current occupied by I in, right? Compared to RS, of course. And then, so the lower the better for R in. And the, the other side here, the higher the R not, more current gonna feed in the load. That's what we want. And then therefore the higher the R not, the better, right? This is for current amplifier, be very careful, because the conclusion is what? Completely opposite to the voltage amplifier, right? This is the uh, input and output re resistance of the voltage amplifier and current amplifier respectively, okay. and the reason behind. Okay, so this is a little summary and the conclusion. And, and then a little bit more about the uh, uh, amplifier. Okay. This, this is the voltage amplifier we saw from previous slide. And the, regarding the power, the amplifier requires external power supply. It requires external power supply. Okay. This is, this is not just, uh, like the uh, DC circuit we played in 235, in where we only have input DC source here. And that's it. And observe the current or voltage anywhere else in the circuit. It's not like that. To make the amplifier works here, you need external power supply. Okay. In addition to the input source. All right. Be very careful. That's why remember in the lab lab one, we need to what? We need to connect both positive and negative power supply for that op-amp. Remember that? That is also a so-called active device who requires external power supply to function. Okay. In addition to the external power supply, you also need an input source. So there are two things. There are two things you need to be able to observe the output, whatever voltage or current it is. Is this? Clear idea. All right, if so, then we can move on. But here, uh, there, of course, there are some convention in terms of decays. Okay. Yeah, but um, not that uh, important. And uh, the important thing is about here, the so-called power balance and efficiency. What it's saying is, again, we have certain power provided by external power supply, DC. We have certain amount of power provided by input source, which is AC. Okay. 
amplifier, voltage amplifier is trying to amplify a small AC signal. It's not trying to amplify the DC This is very, very important. I hope you can take notes here. Uh, be very clear. Amplifier we are talking about are amplifying AC and AC only. DC is out of the external power supply. It has to provide energy to make that amplification happen. Does it make some sense? Because you think about it, you have a very small signal. Let's go back to the very first here. Very small AC signal as the input source. And it becomes so big signal. How could, right? Without external power or energy input, this is not possible. You are creating extra energy that, that from nowhere. That's impossible. That's why we need external power supply to provide required power to make this amplification happen. Does it make sense? So actually, the external DC power supply gives much more power than the input source AC, small AC. Okay, this is a very important concept. Power supply power much higher than the input source power. Okay, very, very important. In the output side, oh, this is the amplified signal output. This is the output. Is the output AC amplified AC? Yes, and uh, maybe also there's a DC shift, give you a DC. Anyways, this is the output of the amplifier. The power is lower than what? What is this? Power dissipated in amplifier. This is nothing but what? Anyone knows? Losses? Very good. Kevin is right. There's nothing but loss. Okay. Bad or good? Of course, bad. This is bad guy. This is a loss. So the power loss is, you see what? It's higher than the output power. It's bad. Okay, so efficiency is, which means efficiency is what? Low, not very high. Okay. The efficiency is not very high. It's not very high. Okay. But anyways, this is the relationship among these powers. So keep in mind the power supply power is, is a major power. Okay, it's a major power, much higher than the input source power. And at the output and output power is lower than the uh, power loss. Okay. It's hard to believe, but this is the truth. Okay. That's the truth. We don't like it, but this is the truth. And the last, of, um, if we put the amplifier into a system overall picture, and then this is the amplifier circuit right in the middle, we call it amplifying stage. Before it, you have an input stage. After it, you have output stage. The entire thing is the amplification system, as a complete amplification system. And uh, of course, the, here we have input. Here we have a load to be fed, right? So think about this. The, what does the input and output stage, what could they play? What role they could play in this system? You have amplifier already circuit over there already. Why you need the input stage and the output stage? What could they what could they do? Any idea? Think about that. If you don't know, that's 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 all right. Just have your guess. The point is just a. Uh, make your brain run. What do you think? Cleaning up your signals maybe, so that way you get the input that you're looking for for your amplifier. And then if your signal still isn't quite clean, your output stage can finish taking any noise out of there, so that way you get what you want on your load. 
Um, it's a good, it's a good guess. However, we are assuming this input is a perfect signal. It's clear, no noise, harmonics free. It's very nice input. It's, 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 it's already because they, we don't, we don't need to do anything about this input at all. Input signal is, is very, very, very clean, convincing. But we still need the input stage and output stage. Actually, this is mainly because of this. Okay, a input stage and output stage are necessary for taking care of the uh, input and output resistance. We just learned. Okay, it's here about the input and output impedances to a voltage amplifier. Once again, voltage amplifier, not current. Okay, uh, we need high or say enough high input impedance and enough low output impedance. That's why we have to have an input stage and output stage, respectively. Okay. Amplifier itself, generally speaking, is not enough high input impedance and not low enough output impedance either. That's why we need input stage, like a what? Buffer. Have you guys learned this, learned this uh, term before? When, when you play with some signal, you always put, put a uh, buffer before going into the next stage. Why is that? It's doing nothing but increase the input state, input impedance. Okay. It's doing nothing but in, in, increase the input impedance because buffers input impedance is what? Ideally, infinity. Have you guys ever, ever heard of this uh, buffer thing? Your job maybe if you have some uh, circuit design uh, experience, okay, a buffer. Now output the output impedance need to be taken care of. Oh, okay, you need to lower down the output impedance, okay, and so that the load can receive the uh, majority of the voltage generated voltage. Okay, it's very very important. Otherwise, your output to the load is very small. It's not uh, output voltage is small means your gain is not reaching the required value. Okay. Gain is too small. You see, okay, in our final project. Yeah, our final project, okay, is uh, using the input and output stage. Is they're they really uh, play very important roles. Okay. So the uh, concept of the system. Any questions before we start our uh, diet? Any uh, yeah, kind of alluding back to the voltage amplifier circuit and to question four in the homework. So do we need to do a source conversion for the current gain for question four if we're given a voltage amplifier circuit? Voltage conversion for what? Uh, convert the source so that's current since that the voltage source is in series with the resistance. We have to no, make no, it. No, 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 okay. no. You could given that the voltage or current meaning a voltage source, a voltage amplifier or a current amplifier. You're not doing a source conversion. No, no, no. But because if you change, because if you think about the amplifier design, you design amplifier and then what? You have no control of your customer, right? You gave you amplifier, this guy, the middle, the, this part to the customer. And the customer just uh, used, okay, this uh, voltage in my fire, okay. I'm gonna put a voltage source here. So, so we have no control over the input. We have no control over is the output as load either. Okay, so we can only worry about our voltage on the fire itself. Okay, so we cannot touch the source, the input side source. No, we can't touch the input side source. In circuit analysis in 235, yes, of course, uh, for some convenience, we can convert the given force to uh, back and forth between current or voltage to make uh, the results uh, calculation easier. That's, that's, that's okay. But here, no, we, we, we don't do that. We don't do that. And simply applying voltage or current divider should be enough. We don't do the source conversion, no. Given the current source, okay, current amplifier. 
we just apply the current divider. Even voltage source, okay, there's a voltage amplifier, right? And then we apply voltage divider. No reason for us to do any like a vote a source conversion. No, no. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right. All right. If these are fine, and then we can start our uh, diode. But before talking about the diodes or uh, future transistors, we uh, I call it a review because I'm expecting you guys have learned a little bit uh, about semiconductor uh, material from uh, either chemistry or physics class, or uh, maybe a little. Um, but let's talk about the semiconductor. Uh, diode transistors are all made of semiconductor. Uh, semiconductor. Um, we could have so-called elemental semiconductor or compound ones. And elemental ones are always out of the column four in the periodic table. But to be honest, we never use carbon. We use a lot, really, really a lot, silicon. And sometimes germanium as well. Okay, But mainly is silicon. The majority of the semiconductor uh, switch, semiconductor transistor, and uh, our electronics com components are made of silicon. Okay. However, um, the silicon's uh, era is almost and also reaching the end. Okay, is is uh, the next generation semiconductor is is popping up, uh, which is something else. We we will leave that leave that later. But elemental semiconductor means generally speaking, silicon or germanium. Okay. Compound ones are a combined mixture uh, from column three and the four. Some good examples are listed here. Silicon germanium, gallium nasonide, or gallium uh, phosphide, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, elemental or combined. Okay, we always use semiconductor to, to build, develop our diode or transistors. And obviously, a question is here. Why we are using semiconductor? Well, before and after semiconductor, what material we have? Insulator and what? Conductor, right? A semiconductor, semiconductor is right in, in the middle. Right? This is some uh, common sense. So why we are not using insulator or conductor to build those devices? We have to use semiconductor in the middle. Have you ever heard about this? Why always semiconductor? What's the reason? Have you ever think about this? Any, any thought? Why we are using semiconductor? No. <laughs> Connor, what do you think? Um, we don't need to conduct like then we can control like the how it inducts or it or it res resists kind of like how much electricity it lets. <laughs> I guess. Whoa! Actually, he got the correct answer. Okay. And he got a correct answer. He's answered right, basically. Why semiconductor, not an insulator, nor conductor? It's because semiconductor has space to be controlled. Okay. Controllable. Whenever you want this semiconductor to become on, or say conductor, it can be. And then when sometime, other time, you want the semiconductor to be off, or say the insulator, it can be. This is controllability. We are able to obtain out of the semiconductor and semiconductor only. In other words, can you turn off a conductor? Can you turn it off? Can you give voltage? <laughs> Definitely current is going through. You can't turn it off. Does it make sense? 
Same thing to insulator. You get voted no matter how, vote, how much voted we gave. Or say you have to give very, very much, a lot, a lot of voted to make it, conduct, make it on. Otherwise, it won't be on, right? You have no control over it, on or off. Then what, uh, what I'm using you for, right? That's why semiconductor, okay? Keep this in mind. We, we always use it. However, we probably never think of it. There's a reason behind it. The semiconductor is a, a, able to be controlled. Okay, that's the reason. Okay, that's the reason. Okay. Good, good. Well, I didn't expect a, a correct answer. However, Connor, Connor, yep, yeah, Connor is right. Good, very good job. Very good job. Now let's start to talk about the diode. Okay. Diode is what? The, the general diode is actually called PN junction diode. Okay. It's made of one piece of P type of semiconductor and one piece of N type of semiconductor. And then you attach them together, okay. forming a so-called PN junction in the middle. Uh, by the way, what does it mean by P-type or N-type of semiconductor? Have you guys learned this? Semiconductor, there's two types. Okay, One is P-type, another is N-type. There's two types of... Uh... <laughs> okay, yeah, th this this one, uh, one is P-type, and another is N-type is, is up to the uh, so-called majority career, uh, mobile career. It's, is whole or electron. Okay. Mm, depending on this, is classified as P-type or N-type. Okay. Yeah. Due to the time limit, we, we don't want to go very deep in this uh, physics thing. However, it's p injunction, one P-type semiconductor attached to N-type semiconductor. And in the middle, you have a so called space charge region, okay, or say the P injunction. Okay. So the diode has only two states. One is on, the other is off. Very simple. Very, very simple. So how to make the diode off? Or say how to turn it off? Here, we open. Okay, so called reverse biased voltage. What does it mean by reverse biased voltage? Reverse biased voltage means you apply the positive of voltage, positive polarity applied onto the N type semiconductor side, negative polarity applied onto P type of semiconductor side. This is a reverse biased voltage applied onto P in diode. This is going to turn this. Out off. Off means what? Open circuit or, or, or short circuit. Off. Give you a switch. It is off. Means open circuit or, or short circuit. Which one? Switch is off and then is what? Uh, open circuit. Yep, very good. She is right. It's open circuit. That means off. Okay. Open circuit further means what? No current. No current. How about voltage? How about the open circuit? I emphasized this uh, in previous lecture. How about the voltage across the open circuit? What is it? You, uh, you have infinite voltage and no current, right? No, you can't remember it. Absolutely not. Uh, Any other answer? Your voltage would be like in the diagram on the slide, your voltage across it would be VR, but it would be whatever the voltage is at that point, which you don't know until you either calculate it or measure it. Exactly right. Okay, so I hope everyone is following. Yep, I, I meant to say resistance was infinite, my bad. Okay, resistance is infinity, that's right. Resistance is infinity, therefore introducing a zero current. Exactly right, okay, exactly right. 
However, the voltage, remember, we cannot know until we really, like uh, Kevin said, until we really conduct the calculation circuit analysis. Okay, remember this open circuit means nothing to the voltage. Okay, we don't know. Okay, good. This is reverse bias voltage applied onto the diode. It is off. Okay, no. On the other hand, if you apply the so-called forward bias voltage, which means the positive polarity of the voltage applied onto the P type, and negative polarity of the voltage applied onto N type. This is a forward bias voltage. And then you still need to overcome a barrier, voltage potential barrier. In other words, if your forward bias voltage is big enough, enough, rather than any forward bias voltage, okay? If it is too small, you still cannot turn it on. You need to be forward bias voltage and also need to be enough to turn on the diode. Once the diode is on, is the current through the diode. Is my question clear? Once the diode is turned on, what is the current through the diode? Anyone? Uh, same as the voltage from the previous one. We don't know until we calculate it. Very good. Very clear. Very clear. Okay. The answer is do not. And then what's the voltage across the diode then? Zero. Okay. Just like the current through the open circuit. Off. Okay. okay. The current through the open open circuit, which is off, is zero. Okay. So here, the diode is turned on, then the voltage across it is immediately becomes zero, short circuit, short circuit, okay? On means short circuit, okay? Ideally, of course, practically, we have some resistance uh, existing there, but uh, ideally, the concept is short circuit, okay? This is a forward and reverse bias voltage. Uh, this is pretty much, uh, some basic idea about on and off, because diode can only have these two states, on or off, only two, okay, very simple, very, very simple. Therefore, diode cannot do what? Cannot do the amplifier, it cannot do the amplification stuff. No, no one uses diode to, to design an amplifier, circ amplifier circuit. No, it doesn't work, because okay, it can only either on or off, it can't do any amplification. That's why the amplifier is made of transistor rather than diode. Okay. We will talk about those more uh, in future. And here, this is a, a Shockley equation, which is the model of the diode. Okay, this is the mathematical model. This is a, a kind of an accurate model involving many, many what coefficients constants. And then, and the IS is saturation current is a super, super small current here. Okay. Times parenthesis exponential of V of D over N times VT. So who is V of D? Not V of D, V sub D. Who is V sub D? Anyone knows? It's very easy to guess. V sub D is this guy. It's nothing but a voltage right across the semiconductor. It's the voltage right across the diode. It's V sub D. The number N is explained here, emission coefficient. V sub T is a parameter we use quite a lot in this class. V sub T is called thermal voltage, a thermal voltage. Is a temperature dependent constant, and generally speaking, we just assume it to be 26 or 25 millivolts as kind of a room temperature. All right? So, this is the remember this one VT is worth your memory. Okay, it's, it's a constant we're going to use for transistors as well. Okay, thermal voltage. 
uh, lowercase k is Boltzmann uh, constant. It's a constant. So, um, generally speaking, I don't encourage students to memorize anything. Because, uh, engineer's job is, is not uh, remembering things, it's understanding things. So these, this is the model, mathematic model. If you plot this model into uh, uh, I versus V, IV characteristic curve, it looks like this, it looks like this, okay. Remember, uh, this is called IV characteristic curve. It's a very important tool to present the model of, or say the behavior of the device or component. Okay, I versus V. Okay, generally speaking, it's um, I is the Y axis, the V is the X axis. Generally speaking, okay. And uh, you can tell the pink curve is the characteristic curve for for the diode. And what you see is. This part in what state? Once again, okay, only on or off. Okay, so the, this this part along the x-axis, what state is this? Is? What state? Only on or off? Which one? You have uh, at least fifty percent of chance to win this. Right? On or off, and why? Of course, it is off. It is off. Why is it off? No current, actually. Okay. No current. Of course, why no current? Well, you are along the voltage axis, which means your current here is zero. You look at the y axis. The you are along zero here. Okay. No current, so it's off. However. You exceeding the zero boundary, reaching the forward biased region here. However, remaining as what off doesn't make sense. Remaining as off because, as I said, your forward biased voltage needs to be what big enough to turn it on. This is telling you exactly the same thing. When you forward by the voltage is not big enough, guess what? Remaining off. Until you increase your voltage beyond what? So called barrier potential. Barrier potential is around here. It's around here. Obviously, this is what we call it cut in voltage, right? Cut in voltage. Cut in voltage from this. Voltage on the diode is turned on. After turn it on, and then what the curve look like? It's almost straight up, right? Almost a straight up. With of course a very very uh, steep slope there. However, we can just uh, approximately understand this as a straight up, right? Why the straight up? Anyone can explain. Why or say why straight up means it is on now. Anyone tell why the street line is indicating on? What's the sense? Here we saying off and off because obviously current is zero. It's current zero. It's open circuit. Open circuit means off. Why we're here on? Why is on? Anyone can explain? The uh, current goes to infinity, and the uh, voltage goes to zero on it. And basically, right? Basically, right? So it's like what? Well, I, I shouldn't current. say zero, I suppose, but it, it just kind of halts. Yep, yep, yeah. I understand what you mean, basically. So, so Shane's meaning is like this. So the current is boost, go straight up. Okay, it's a very, very aggressive. Increase. However, your voltage is basically stay at this cutting voltage, right? Stay at this cutting voltage without any increase. Which means what? This is a short circuit. Short circuit means what? You gave a voltage across to 
to a very, very small voltage, it can give you an infinity amount of uh, what current, right? This is the same behavior like that, short circuit. That's why it is on. Any questions so far? Any questions regarding uh, reading, how to read this uh, IV curve? Because we're going to read the IV curve for transistors as well. So you need to get used to such a uh, uh, characteristic IV curve. All right, if this is fine, then we can move on. And uh, extending the reverse uh, bias the region to the left, you have actually have what? Uh, such called breakdown phenomenon happen. Breakdown. What does it mean by breakdown? Generally speaking, you apply reverse bias voltage. The diode is off. The current is very small or say basically zero. However, if you apply extremely high reverse the bias voltage, it, it what? Break down the diode. What's it mean by break down the diode? You make it on, right? You make it on reversely. You make it on reversely. What what does it mean by re on reversely? Your current is flowing the backwards, right? Flowing the other way around. Does it make sense? So this is the consequence of applying extremely high reverse bias voltage. As a good thing or bad thing, first of all, the current is flowing backwards. Generally speaking, it's a bad thing. It's a fail of the uh, diode. However, the Zener, I think uh, most of you guys have experienced or at least heard of this term, right? Zener diode is, is utilizing this feature of, of the, the, the IV curve to what? To, to help measure a certain voltage threshold for protection purpose, et cetera. Okay. So Zener diode has relatively low breakdown voltage because generally speaking is very very high the breakdown voltage very very high okay it can undertake like a, a hundreds or, or a thousand volts however zener dimes breakdown voltage here is very very low 3.3 5 9 etc have you guys uh used the zener be before for anything? I have not. All right. Connor, nope. have you used Josh? No, okay. Uh Connor, have you used Zener for, for anything? Yeah, to uh clamp like a voltage on like a exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's a uh, for clamping. Okay, for clamping. You use Zener, you can build a clamping or or clipper circuit as well. Very good, very good. Okay. So you, you, you utilize nothing but the breakdown, low breakdown voltage. Okay. Okay, this is the IV characteristic, very important. Next thing is also very important because, and, and very easy too. And circuit simple, it's very important. Okay, and circuit, we see it is like this. Okay, what we see is like this. Two terminals, right? Two terminals. It pretty much has a switch. This is just, just a switch, right? Just a switch. On and off, this is a switch, right? Two terminals. Okay. This terminal, which is like a what? The which is the bottom side of the triangle here, is called anode. The other terminal, which has a bar here, is called cathode. But the point is, what does it mean by forward bias voltage? Forward bias voltage means the positive polarity is applied onto the anode. Negative polarity on cathode. This is forward, okay? This is a forward bias. What does it mean by reverse bias? Of course, flip the polarity. Okay. You gotta remember this. So, what is how you see this forward 
reverse device that is is up to your positive polarity is um anode or cathode okay anode or cathode it is very simple very easy and uh next you know, we need to learn the dc and ac analysis but uh, here if you recall um hold on one second let me bring up the uh here you can recall our the course pattern we learned from our first lecture this semester actually you see you see dc and ac analysis right two major columns you basically now have done this it is set doesn't make sense yeah we talked about semiconductor structure we talked about the certain symbol we talked about iv curves okay and now is a term for dc analysis and okay, now we are ahead here we are at here does it make sense followed by ac analysis of course and same pattern three columns for mosfet and bdt all right so this is the uh, again always be clear where, where are you at okay? and the organization and, and uh, the structure okay? always be clear on these things all right now let's go back to the powerpoint slide here Because this is the first time we uh, come across the DC and AC analysis. So let's talk about the basic concept. What does it mean by DC analysis and AC analysis? Okay. Because we're going to do the same thing for transistors, right? The concepts remain the same for, every, uh, for anything, okay? for any uh, device. Okay. DC analysis means what? DC analysis means a simplified model for large signal change in voltage and current. And this uh, definition a bit blur actually what does it mean is first of all the dc analysis is talking about very large dc voltage what does it mean by very large this is an electronic circuit there's no hundred volts or thousand volts kilowatts no that that's not electronic circuit that's power circuit okay so in electronics world large signal means like what 10 volt okay that's large signal five volts or say okay that's a large signal so we are talking about large signal like that which is dc and ac analysis means for for small ac signal the ac signal is very small in electronic circuit okay amplifier circuit or say how small it is what level electronics like the midi Tens milli, kind of like like that, small signal, way smaller than the large signal, obviously, way smaller. And this is the AC. Okay. They say AC is small in electronic amplifier. DC signal is big, much bigger. Okay. And the more importantly, who is introducing the DC? big DC and who is introducing the small AC you need to understand this the source of them the DC here the big one is introduced by external power supply uh, please take some notes here external power supply external power supply we just uh, talk about the uh, uh, the dependent source model remember over there you mentioned the Amplifier requires external power supply. External power supply is the source of the DC. Okay. That's why we are conducting the DC analysis. It's big and much bigger. Now, who is introducing the AC analysis? AC signal here. Input source. Okay, input source. Remember? We have two things. Input source has given you very small AC. Okay. Therefore, you're need, you need to conduct the AC analysis. AC analysis. Okay. One big, one small, one DC, one AC. Does it make sense now? Okay. 
And uh, the general uh, voltage recurrent signals are superposition. Okay, this is a very important concept. Okay, your, your system has a power supply, your system has an input in two different stores, basically. And both are independent, therefore we can apply the superposition concept. So when we conduct a DC analysis, guess what? Guess what? Eliminate the AC source here. That makes sense. And then when we conduct the AC analysis here, we eliminate the DC external power supply here. For superposition. Okay, so the basic principle, the reason is superposition. Okay, now we are based on this. That's why we are conducting the DC analysis and the AC analysis separately, individually. In DC analysis, we eliminate the AC source, which is the input source. In the AC analysis, we eliminate the DC source, which is the external power supply. Is this concept clear? Because they're very, very important. Why and how? Okay. Uh, now we are talking about why. As to the how, of course, when we reach there, we're going to talk about the procedure. But now you need to understand why first. It being clear why we are doing so. And what's the uh, principle behind Any questions? All right, if this is fine, then we can move on. So let's talk about DC analysis, uh, or say, what is the diode model? That like pretty much we are learning the diode model in DC analysis, and then followed by diode model in AC analysis. Right? In DC analysis, uh, a diode model is just like, uh, just like what? Just like this. Diode is equivalent to a power DC power supply with positive polarity at anode, negative polarity at the cathode. And this voltage power supply's value is equal to the cutting voltage of the diode, which is generally speaking around 0.7 volt. Did I make myself clear? Okay, so in the circuit you are seeing a diode, you're not going to see uh, the model obviously, then how you translate that diode into a model in DC is positive polarity of the DC supply is representing the anode. Negative polarity of the DC supply is the cathode. All right, so this is the, be careful, the orientation. That's the point, that's the point, okay? Because if we flip the, this diode, so should we for this uh, power supply. This is how we translate the diode into a DC supply, which is the DC model of the diode, a DC model. Of course, why? Of course, why? When it is on, is it is like what? Straight line right up there. And it's staying at the cutting voltage, staying at this voltage without any change. The current goes up. Staying at this voltage without change, the voltage, that means Nothing but a power supply, DC power supply. Right. Okay, this is this is why we are modeling the diode by a DC supply in DC analysis. Value equals to cutting voltage, uh, not necessarily 0.7, but whatever given. A very simple example here, and uh, this is a uh, diode circuit. And what we're seeing is we only have a DC supply here, a DC input, without any AC input. So this is a purely DC circuit, actually. This is not, there's no AC thrust. It's a purely 
in the circuit. So we're gonna replace this guy in the circuit by what? By a DC model with polarity like this. Value of 0.7 as given. Inside of the circuit, if you go for ID, I think it's very straightforward. It's pretty much uh, one equation. At the beginning, assuming the diode is on, well, because sometimes this is easy. You can tell this is forward biased. So we know the diode is on. And then we can apply this DC model. But in some circuit, we probably don't know the diode is on or off. We can assume it is on. Okay. Be very careful here. Uh, take notes. Be very careful here. When diode is on, or say we when we assume diode is on, that's the only reason we model it by a DC supply. Because if the diode is off, what is the model for the diode? Okay, this is a prerequisite, but pretty much we must assume it is on. Very good, very good, very good. Kevin is right. Okay. M is right, very good. So be very careful. If we know the diode is off, it is not the supply anymore. Okay. Be, be very careful. It's not su supply uh, 0.7 volts supply anymore. Because we know it's off. But the re only reason we, we replace the diode by DC model like this is we are assuming it is off or we know it is off. Does it make sense? Be very careful. Okay. The model. 0.7 in this page, this model is an on model, it's not off model. Doesn't make sense. It must be on. Okay, once again, it's on, then this is the model. If it's off, then open circuit. Okay, this everybody knows open circuit if this is off. Pretty much the diode has two states two versions of the model, all right? Then this is the uh, one KVL equation can do the job, very straightforward. And then you're gonna find the uh, diode current, which is 2.15 milliampere. And what this current is telling us, it's very, very indicating, uh, indicating what? What is, on because the current is not zero, right? There's current flow through. That means, yes, the diode is on. That assumption at the beginning was right. Because it, since we, we are mentioning assuming, that means it's not necessarily right, right? However, the result of the non-zero current justify our assumption at the beginning. Does this, this logic make sense? Yeah. All right, great, great. Thank you, Shane. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, DC analysis of the diode. Of course, we can have more examples, but uh, today we just need to become familiar with the concept. Okay. So, Basically, uh, that's the lecture for today. And uh, one more thing, I think. Um, by the end of this module uh, in the Canvas, uh, we have a time e uh, exam time survey. Okay, Please remember to conduct it. Let me know if the exam time is working for you. Okay, Because if no objection is received, I'm going to just uh, make the exam happen at that time. There's a due, due date for it. The due date is uh, 24th. Okay. We still have uh, plenty of time. However, you can remember to do it. Okay, I remember to do it. Okay. This is the proposed time for now. And once again, if no objection is received, we're going to go with this schedule. Okay, We're going to go with this schedule. This is the uh, exam time. Survey, remember to conduct it. Okay, very important. Um, and then I think uh, that's all for today. 
and uh, thank you for attending this lecture and uh, talk to you guys on Thursday. Uh, our lab uh, will be starting from nine o'clock, as you know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye now.